Hey folks, imposter syndrome in the tech industry is real. But if you're someone who constantly feels that you're not good enough to be a programmer, then you might want to stick around because my goal by the end of this video is to convince you that you are. And I'm going to do that by sharing my experience with imposter syndrome a few years ago and the lessons that I learned that made me realize that most people actually don't suck at programming. It's just that they aren't doing it correctly. So grab a coffee, take a seat and let's talk about why you don't suck at coding. Right, so back in 2020, when I landed my first software engineering job, I really didn't have much real world coding experience. I was really a noob when it came to web development, which is what I specialize in today. And somehow I got placed in this team that specialized entirely in web development and had some of the smartest engineers that I had ever met in my life. I'm talking about software engineers who could solve the hardest lead code problems with ease, who seem to know everything there is to know about web development whenever you went to them with a question, and who've single-handedly built applications that are used by over 100,000 users every single day. And I vividly remember being frustrated pretty much every day for eight months straight because while I would struggle to do even the simplest tasks, I'd watch these engineers smash out even the most difficult programming tasks without even breaking a sweat. And what was even more demotivating was the fact that some of these engineers were around the same age as me, but were at least 100 times better than I was at software development. And around the 8 month mark, I remember questioning if I was even a good enough programmer to be in this industry. But I'm really glad that I stuck it out and didn't quit because soon after, I was mentored by some of these engineers every single day for 3 years straight. And during this mentorship, I got a chance to really dig into how their brain actually works and how they actually go about solving really complicated problems. And after studying my mentors for a while, and with a little bit of trial and error, I learned five key lessons that made me realize that I wasn't really bad at programming, it's just that I was focusing on the wrong things and reinforcing bad habits which prevented me from growing as a software engineer. So the first lesson that I learned is that thinking or problem solving is a skill that needs to be actively developed. A lot of beginners in this industry have this misunderstanding that they'll become better software engineers if they solve more lead code problems, watch more tutorials, or just learn more programming languages and frameworks. But that's not entirely true because from what I've seen, what makes top engineers really stand out is their ability to think and use all of this knowledge they've acquired over the years to solve really complex problems. I guess the analogy here is that all the technical knowledge that you acquire over the years are just tools, but problem solving is your ability to use those tools to basically solve problems and build something meaningful. So in case you're interested in diving deeper into the world of problem solving, I'll leave a link in the description to a video that I made a while back on this topic. The second lesson that I learned from my mentors is that you shouldn't actually start coding until you fully understand the problem. Every single time my mentors were given a problem, I watched them spend hours, days, or sometimes even weeks just doing research online, noting down all the information they knew about a problem onto a whiteboard, or scheduling a bunch of meetings with stakeholders to ask clarifying questions and made sure they were on top of the problem that they were actually tasked to solve. And this was a huge contrast to how I had been working and how I've seen beginners work on a problem. The first instinct that beginners have is to start coding right away and they have this mindset which tells them that they'll figure things out as they start coding. But what ends up happening is that they eventually come across a bunch of different edge cases which they didn't consider initially which eventually doesn't play well with any of the code that they'd written down. So next time you're given a problem, I'd recommend fighting that instinct to start coding and to sit down and really think about the problem and make sure you understand every single aspect about it. The third lesson that I learned is when facing a complex complex problem, a whiteboard or a notebook can be your best friend. Once you're given a problem, it's really tempting to start coding right away and to tell yourself that you'll work out a solution as you start coding. And this is something that I used to do quite a lot when I first started programming. But quite often, I'd find myself getting fixated on the wrong things, like what I should be naming my variables or how I should structure my code. And I'd fixate on these things so much that eventually I'd lose sight of the bigger problem that I was trying to solve. But my mentor showed me that getting all the ideas you have about solving a problem onto a whiteboard and then working through an entire solution on that whiteboard before you start coding can help you save tons of time and avoid trivial bugs. 
The next lesson that I learned is that you should try not to get attached to your solution, but instead focus on finding the best solution possible. Now, this is something I was extremely guilty of a few years ago. I remember when I used to submit code for review, every time I received any feedback, I used to do my best to defend the code that I had written, even if it was obvious that what I had written is far from optimal. And that mainly happened because I was personally attached to the solution that I had developed. But over time, I realized that the best engineers that I had observed never actually do this. Instead, they're open to and really welcome feedback because what they're after is finding the best possible solution to a problem. And sometimes the best solution only surfaces itself through feedback. The next lesson that I learned is whenever you read code, you need to get a lot better at understanding the underlying intention behind that code rather than fixating on its implementation. What I mean by this is that I've seen a lot of beginners get hung up on trivial implementation details. So for example, example, if you ask a beginner to read a piece of code that stores and sorts user data in memory, then 9 out of 10 times, beginners would start looking at the data structures that were used in that piece of code or how the algorithms were actually implemented. But from my observation of my mentors, they actually never really did this. If I would give my mentors the same piece of code, they would instead only look at the code until they realized that its main purpose is to store and sort user data in memory. And from there, they'd stop reading the code completely. The only time they start jumping into the implementation details was when they were tasked with actually improving or fixing that code. And when I started focusing on understanding the intent behind code, it allowed me to effectively problem solve and adapt to changes over time. So if you've made it this far in the video, then congratulations, because you're likely to be someone who strives for self-improvement every single day. But from my personal experience, continuous self-improvement can be a long and tiring journey, which may lead to you feeling frustrated, overwhelmed, or even just burnt out. If you're someone struggling with burnout, then you might want to check out this video where I share my personal experience with burnout and how I've managed to completely eliminate it from my life since then. 